Hi, welcome to Convince Me Audio. Today we have the review of these, the Hyphem and Aria. Let's talk. This mid-tier headphone from Hyphemen comes in at a price point of 1599 MSRP still to date. They have some of the technologies that have been implemented in their newer headphones, such as the Sandaras and other high-end technology in their Hyphemen HE1000 V2. And it's basically culmination of all of the products in a very, very, very good price point. Let's discuss the hardware first, shall we? So, these have a steel headband, exactly in reminiscent of the Haifa Mensas Varas. They have polythene fake leather headband, which is very, very comfortable, and the same adjustable mechanism as the Hi-Fi and Sesvara. Quite a lot of the Sesvara DNA has been taken to create these headphones, which is wonderful. I love these headphones. So, we have steel for the headband, we have steel for the rods, and these pivot 180 or 360 degrees, even like this, to be honest with you, and they lay flat like so. Um, I love headphones that actually do this. It's so useful for taking it on the go, etc. These are obviously open back. You will not be using it uh, on the go, not only due to the open back design of these headphones, but obviously because of their power requirements, which we'll be getting onto later. The cups are made of plastic. Quite tacky feeling, to be honest with you. Uh, the grills are metal, which is fantastic. And this headphone is very slim profile. We have a wedge design for the ear pads. It's leather and some mesh material, which is very, very comfortable and very soft. It's basically the same DNA as the Sparas, like I stated previously. Do these headphones scream $1,600? Uh, yes and no. They are no focal clears, they are no LCDX, but I prefer this design over the HD800S. So hardware and build quality, very, very adequate. Uh, they also come with this single-ended copper cable, uh, terminating at a 6.3 jack, single-ended, and 3.5 connection. It's horrible. Sounds all right. Uh, I don't really like it. You can replace it if you want to. Obviously you want to replace it due to the amount of power these need. Now, getting on to the comfort. These are extremely comfortable. For me personally, they required a little loosening up, but I think this is okay. Um, now, whether you're wearing glasses or not, extremely comfortable. The headband doesn't cause any hot spots up here whatsoever. It cinches tightly across the skull so that there is no gaps. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the flare mechanism of the Imperian or the Sfaras, which makes the headband completely disappear, but this is comfortable. These headphones are very, very light, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about in regards to weight. The pads are big, enormous in fact, airy, shallow, but your ear doesn't touch the driver um, unless you have huge lugs due to the nature of the pad design at the back. It's thicker at the back than it is at the front. Comfort, definitely up there. Is it as comfortable as the Meze Empyrean? Uh, no, due to that uh, flaring headband. Is it as comfortable as the Sephora's? Of course not. Uh, is it more comfortable than the LCD X Focal Clear HD800S? 100% yes. This is a winner for that. So, build quality, adequate. Comfort, excellent. Let's get on to how they're driven, what you can drive them with, and the experiences you're going to get. Now, I have to go off on a little tangent here. Uh, these models are my own. Uh, I bought these myself, and when they first came in to the studio for review, I put them on the top in A90, said, okay, let's see what these Arias can do. I got the biggest migraine you can possibly imagine, and I have no idea why. I was listening at talking volume, no more than 50 decibels, and the tonality was fine, everything was fine, but I could not stand these headphones for more than 20 minutes. I mean, it sent me to bed two nights in a row, and uh, in the audio lounge private chat, I 
brought this up with some of the lads. Nobody could understand what the reason could be. So I reached out to my boy Armand and said, please mate, can you send me your Arias just so that we can do an AB, just in case there's a problem with these uh, that maybe audibly I'm not picking up, but sonically something might be there, some kind of interference or something. I, I We just wanted to understand what the problem was. And when he sent it in, while that was being delivered to me, I changed my interconnects, disconnected them and reconnected them. Um, I was using the Red River cables from AudioQuest and as soon as I disconnected and I reconnected, that problem went away. The conclusion we came to, there might have been some subtle ground looping that was probably above 25k or 30k and not audible to the human ear but definitely the brain was picking it up, something was happening because that migraine issue went away completely and I've never ever had such an issue in regards to headphones. So, swinging back around to how can you drive these and what they're good for. I have tested this Aria with seven different setups. The Topin A90, the HDVD800, the Fio M11 Pro, the Syncer, the Motu and a couple of others. I found that on every single setup you're going to get a different experience with these headphones. And that is problematic. The only headphone previously I have had such an issue with has been the P9 signatures up here. Those are so transparent and so sensitive to DACs and amplifiers, you need the perfect setup before you truly get what they can do. It seems to be the same situation here. These are 41, 42 ohm, which is not too bad. It's easy to drive, so you think. But their sensitivity is only 92 decibels. These need serious current for the low end. And only certain amplifiers pair nicely with these. So the experience you will have will be slightly different to the one I have had. And I will try and explain each different setup in conjunction to the sound quality they provided. First of all, I'm gonna to go to the A90. Those were transparent, clean, analytical. It can drive the bass well, it, it's nice, but absolutely lifeless to my ears. And I was bored out of my mind. I did not mind YouTube, watching YouTube videos with it. I did not mind editing with it. I did not care for music in the slightest on these. It was good for TV and film and stuff like that, but it was not adequate for music. And at 1600, that's why you're buying these. There's a lot of caveats to these headphones and I think it's important you understand this. HDVD, the imaging and the staging was absolutely excellent. I did not care for the tonality. It was too warm and I did not care for the bass region. It started playing around with it. Those are high impedance amplifiers and unfortunately it doesn't work very well with the Aria specifically, not to my tastes. My enjoyment came from the Honey, the Death on Ray Honey review up here. It's excellent. I think that little amplifier though with all of his issues, can not only drive these, but have excellent synergy. So most of my review is gonna be dependent on that because that was the best experience I had with these Arias. Swinging back around to the Fio M11 Pro and the Syncsa and things like that. On the Syncsa it was nice, but I don't think it can drive these, not the base region. You do not get the impact and the subtle nuances as you would get on a E90. It's far more musical, it's far more pleasing to listen to and it's far more enjoyable for songs. But the technicality of those two amplifiers is truly apparent when you listen to the A90 straight after that you jump onto the Syncsar. The review comparison for those two I will actually do at some point on the channel because I think it's necessary. That brings us nicely to sound. How do these sound? These headphones are very tonally balanced. They are more for analytical listeners. They sound transparent, they sound clean, see-through, and the drivers pick up the nuance of an amplifier and DAC to a great extent. I would say they're leaning towards neutral, subtly bright, just by listening. I've not looked at the frequency response myself. As you know, I like to actually listen to equipment rather than look at numbers 
because I think due to the fact that all of our hearing is so different, we subtly perceive sounds in a, in a different manner compared to each other. It's good to use as a basis, it's not good to use as a overall experience of the headphone you're going to have because my experience will be very different to yours. So, they sound neutral, leaning slightly towards the brighter sound of things. They're very transparent. The timbre is okay. The instruments sound realistic enough that it doesn't bother you like it does on the Focal Clear OG, review up here, and still surpasses the Focal Clear MG, review up here. They do everything well. I don't think there is anything that stands out in regards to these tones, apart from the comfort personally and subjectively. I think their timbre is good, yes. Their tonality is balanced, it's clean, it's very good. And what does this mean for music? This basically means you can throw any genre at you want at these headphones. It will work for classical just as well as metal. That's why most people who have LCDX, Focal Clear, HD800S, etc. end up after buying these reaching for these the most and disregarding all of their other headphones or reaching for these the least because they don't do that one specific thing outstandingly well like an HD800S's staging, like a Focal Clear's dynamics and punch, like an LCDX's slam and hit for EDM, but they do everything well. Let's talk about staging. Now the staging on these is excellent. Not as big as an HD800S, but bigger than anything else in this lower flagship region. It's fantastic. It's big, it's wide, it's tall, it's huge. And not only this, it has the capability to actually shrink and expand depending on the track. So on some songs it will sound very small and on other songs you will find this massive arena in front of you which is open, deep, tall and wide which is fantastic. And what helps is that it's transparent and see-through so you can see right into the depth of the mix. Imaging and layering on these is another exceptional point. Like I stated previously, they do everything well. Now, when images layer, you get one sound here, another sound just behind it like a deck of cards and they will all shuffle like this and you can see each individual sound and it comes in at angles to you and it goes away from you at angles. Excellent, absolutely excellent layering and imaging. I will not say these are as accurate for imaging as the HD800S. Those have a pinpoint accuracy that outclasses all of these except maybe the Focal Clear MG. But these for layering top the HD800S and for layering they even top the Focal Clear OG. I think it's more of a competition between these and the Focal Clear MG. Having four different headphones to achieve the same thing that this does across the board, you will buy these. You will reach for these more. The Focal Clear MG, like I stated in that review, you can only listen to for 45 minutes. These are all day wearing, eight hours a day, a work tool and excellent and they shine at everything they do. Detail and microdynamics on these headphones are a bit of a mixed bag. You will pretty much get a lot of the absolute top end, low end, mid range detail out of the track that you're looking for and it's apparent it's clean, it's clear. I don't think it's as detailed as something like an Empyrean or a VC, but I think in this class of headphones, they actually shine. Due to the fact that their timbre is good, I think it doesn't overshadow their detail like the way the HD800S does. The timbre on that is not too great. Microdynamics, I think, is a little lost on these. I think the dynamics of these headphones is okay, it's good, it's not Focal Clear MG, and I don't think it's HD800S either. And when you have microdynamics and dynamics as a package together, I think they are a little overshadowed by the layering and imaging and the staging on these. So it's adequate, it's just not good enough. Air on these is exceptional. 
these go right up. So these go from 20 hertz all the way up to 35 kilohertz. You're not going to have any issues there. And it's a smooth linear uh, rise to my ears. And things sound open when they need to. They sound tall and wide and airy without being ethereal. Uh, I don't want to jump onto the bass section yet, but because of the quality of the bass, um, air doesn't come across ethereal and light and thin. No, air is excellent on these. Decay is good as well. It does everything so well. And the things that it can do okay, you wish it could do more, it's good enough that you can get by. These headphones make me smile a little bit because Hyphenman have done an excellent job at bringing something exceptional to those people that maybe just want one headphone and they're not crazy like us. Let's talk about the bass region. Now, the bass region is very well textured. It goes freaking low. Um, it's not very, very impactful, but it's authoritative. And by that, it gives instruments and it gives performances body, which is excellent. But it doesn't have the LCDX, bam! What it does have is authority. They sound big, like a punch you in the chest subwoofer, rather than kick you in the nuts, LCD XMG. It's very well textured and it's very, very lean. It's linear. At times I have found for certain tracks, it can sound a little bloated, a little tiny, 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 tiny smidgen. It's not as lean as an HD800S, but uh, it comes up rarely, which is great. The mid bass has got nice definition, sort of a punch, um, but it's more for show and it's got a good attack. But again, it's good. It's just not exceptional. Um, the upper bass region does not bleed into the mids whatsoever. It's a very transparent sounding headphone and it's very colorless. If you can imagine the winter sky, actually let's revert that. I think if you can imagine the autumn sky, when it's gray, light steel color, it provides that coloration to the sound. It's very whitey grayish sounding. So it's a very translucent sound. There is no coloration, and by that, I mean nothing is lost. And this is across the board. It goes all the way from the bass region to the treble region, which is fantastic. That brings us to the mid-range. Instruments are very well defined. They're very distinct. You can point at them. You understand what instrument is actually playing. It's very well textured. I love the mid-range on these. And it's lean, and it's clean, and it's apparent, and it can go forward, and it can come back when it needs to. The soundstage dynamics is excellent and that ties in with the mid-range. It's exceptionally well done and I think for me personally this might be the most pleasing part of these headphones to my ears. Things like piano and strings and things like that all sound convincing. It's a good headphone. I don't think it's as good as the HD800S for classical. I don't think it's as good as EDM for the Focal Clear MG like I stated but I think it does them justice. The treble region is a little bitey. I don't think it's very smooth. It's smooth, but it's not very smooth. The Focal Clear OG had more of a non-fatiguing sound, but I do not care for slightly overly bright headphones. Not that these are, but it's just there is a bite. There is an actual bite to the treble region, and it usually uh, focuses in the lower to mid uh, region of the treble. It's a smoother experience than the LCDX, to be sure, but there is some sort of fatigue there. That's why I'm talking about, that's why I was mentioning the actual amp pairing is quite important. So a slightly warmer amp, not too warm, but slightly warmer amp, something like a Honey, or if it could possibly power it, a Dynello, most of them can't. It, this will be exceptional. That's why I think if you're a beginner, you buy the Syncsa with these. You don't buy the A90 unless exclusively you want the performance, the analytical listening, and you don't want that slight musicality that those provide. Let's discuss the vocals. Very, very good on these. Very vivid, very much in front of you, very, very focused, yet it doesn't have any actual 3D representation like cases Vara. We can't compare a $1,500 headphone with a $6,000 headphone, I know. I think the Focal Clear MG had a little bit more size. Like 
This is a bit more like this, a bit 2 d -ish for the vocals. Very present, very much in front of you. It's not a globe. You can't really hear the surroundings behind and around. It sounds dimensionally 2D a little bit. Not by much, just a little bit. But the tonality is good, like across the board. From the bass to the mid to the treble of the vocals, it's actually very well balanced. Um, it's very pleasing. It's another one of those aspects of these headphones that you go, ooh, that's good. I actually don't need to reach for another headphone because I want to focus on the vocals exclusively because these are good enough. Male vocals, female vocals, all seem to be great. I think it's a little bit more pleasing in the lower mids and mid mids and the upper bass than the lower treble, personally and subjectively saying and thinking, but I think it's very good. The presentation of all the culmination of the sounds together is very well done on these. I think you will be very happy if you just want to spend your $1,600, please buy these at used for $1,200. Don't buy MSRP. But if you have to, because they're your only headphone and you want it new and you want to keep it, that's fine. I think they're still excellent for $1,600. But you've got to remember your chain. You've got to remember your preference because I think you need that subtle flavoring for your own specific taste to truly enjoy them. For me, it's something slightly warmer like the honey. For others, it's slightly more clean, lean, analytical sounding like the A90. Okay, my subjective opinion. What do I think of these? Would I buy them? Would I keep them? Uh, incidentally, these have already been sold because the channel doesn't need to keep a multitude of headphones around unless it's for comparisons and those are already coming in thanks to you guys that I am deeply grateful for. So the benchmark for the channel is the Sesfaras, the Hollow DAC, and the AHP2 and obviously we're not going to be comparing headphones to such high-end standards but it's good to understand where the goals are and it's good to understand in relation to other headphones where other headphones come in at and I think if you haven't heard the top end it's very difficult to judge how good something is in the middle or how exceptional something is at the low end when they're trying their best to outshine others because there are far more of them down there than there are up there. Subjectively, if I was keeping one headphone around, I would keep these. Even over the Bayer Dynamics T1 review up here because of the fact that they do everything well. Because of the fact that I don't have to worry about comfort, I don't have to worry about a lot of things. What don't I like about these headphones? There's quite a few. For me personally, I don't think the resolution of the drivers is high enough for my subjective personal tastes. When you're used to Imperians and you're used to Susvaras and you're used to an old VX and Z1R, like the unique Melody Mest, I got over these very, very quickly. If you're interested in my opinion in regards to some of those headphones I mentioned, check out the description down below. I think for a beginner, somebody who's jumping from mid-fi to the lower hi-fi territory, they should consider this before everything else because those other headphones do one or two things very well and they have a lot of caveats. These don't. If you're jumping from HD6XX, if you're jumping from Ananda's or GL2000s and Sundara's, you should actually focus on these first unless there's a specific sound signature you want to go for because some of the others are problematic. I would like to take a moment to discuss our Patreon review and why it's there. The reason why I put a Patreon in place is to actually get reviews to those of you who are in a hurry quicker than it gets released on YouTube. Um, to form a community on the Audio Lounge private chat, Telegram chat, so that I can answer your questions via voice and talk to you one-on-one -on -one in regards to the systems you're planning to build and to make you aware of the pitfalls and to actually be able to ship these items back and forth across the world because shipping is freaking expensive in the United Kingdom. Um, also, it will assist and aid in growing the channel and helping to bring more equipment in for review, lighting, camera, and be able to pay my editors who are working so hard at the moment. And I would like to extend a big thank you to. And to our existing Patreon members, thank you so much for keeping the Audio Lounge private chat alive. 
Thank you for all of your support. I am Koji CEO. I will see you in the next review. Peace.